Hello, Precalculates. Uh, welcome to week eight of our quarantine uh, remote learning. Um, hopefully you guys are keeping sane here. It's, a, it's the finish line. So we're finishing strong here. We haven't given up. We're, we're still looking at these videos of Mr. Edwards jabbering on and on. Um, I'll try to make, keep this one quick. I don't want to do two, but at the same time, I want to go slow enough to where you, you pick up some stuff. Okay. Um, at the very end, we've been dealing with sequences, by the way, and the very end of sequences comes this topic called binomial expansion, okay? And you'll see in a second why they put it where they put it with, with sequences, but it is kind of a different topic um, that shows up on, on some ACT prep stuff. You, you can use it in, in calculus and maybe some college entrance exams and things. That sometimes it's a popular question, but um, it's a way to, exactly what it sounds like, expand a binomial. So let's just march right into it. Let's get into it. Um, expanding a binomial. Remember, a binomial is just two terms being raised to some power. So we're going to be detectives here for a second, okay? I'm going to um, expand some binomials for you, like x plus y, that's a binomial raised to a power. That's a binomial, I'm going to expand it out, okay? That would just be anything to the zero power of one, okay? x plus y, that same binomial, how about if I did it to the first power? That's easy enough, and then I'm making a pattern, right? We're in sequences, uh, sequences are all about finding patterns and extrapolating and um, making them go further and, and looking what's going to happen in the future, okay? x plus y to the first would be this. Next one. x plus y squared would be x plus y times x plus y. It's not just x squared plus y squared. Don't fall for that. We would have to multiply those out by foiling first outer inner last or, or d double distributing, whatever you want to do. But this isn't too bad of a problem. We could handle this, okay? What if I did another one? x plus y to the third power. Okay, so now x plus y times x plus y, get my answer, then times it by another x plus y. We're getting fancier here. We're getting bigger. And if, if you went through and cleaned it all up, this is what you would get. So what I want you guys to do for a second, hit pause and be detectives, be sleuths. There are patterns all over this thing that we can use and will use because what happens if a problem asks me to do 6x plus 5y to the ninth power. Oh my lord, I do not want to have to multiply those out nine times. We can use patterns and, and just make this pattern continue and write out our answer. So really, the binomial theorem, and I'll give you a video, a clip that, that goes into it more specifically. For me, um, what I'm going to do is, is teach you guys the shortcut. What is a way to expand these binomials without multiplying them all? Okay, hit pause, find patterns. Okay, we're back. Hopefully you guys hit pause, and I'm not just waiting in silence, waiting silently, looking silly, but um, we, we can see patterns. Some of the things that we can see, right, uh, they're always going to start with one and end with one as our coefficient. 1x, 1y, 1x squared, 1y squared, 1x cubed, 1y cubed. Um, <clears throat> how about the powers? The powers, this is x to the first, x to the second, x to the third. They always start whatever the power is that I'm raising my whole binomial to. That's the power of the very first term, squared, squared, to the first, to the first. Um, how about x to the third goes down by one? The power goes x to the third, then x to the second, then x to the first. This one actually would be x to the zero, but x to the zero is like one, so it's not there. Okay, uh, It starts at whatever this power is and drops by one every time. And conversely, the second term, y in this case, starts at zero and goes up by one. So there's actually a y to the zero here. And then a y to the 1, a y to the 2, y to the 3. That pattern would continue. Um, there's patterns with the coefficients, and we'll see if you see that. And that's what we'll talk about in a second. But um, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But th this is going to be Pascal's triangle. I'll show it to you in a second. Pascal's triangle starts with a 1. Then the next row, 1 and a 1. Then it always starts with a 1. And then to find the next term of the sequence, where we're in sequences, you add the two coefficients above it. So 1 plus 1, 2. And then ends with a 1. Starts with a 1, ends with a 1. Starts with a 1. To find the next one, you add the 2 above it. So 1 and 1, or 1 and 2, 3. 2 and 1, 3. Ends with a 1. Okay? Take a second now. Pause again. Do it for me. And what is the next one going to be? I'm going to ask you to do x plus y to the fourth power and expand it all out with patterns. Not with having to multiply that thing over and over and over. But to, to use this pattern seeking. Go for it. See what you see. See what you get. Here we are. Hopefully you got something like this. 
If this is to the fourth power, then my very first term is being raised to the fourth power. Then the x's drop by one each time. My y's will start at zero, or my second terms will start it to the zero power and go up by one each time. y is the first, y is the second, y is the third, y is the fourth. We get these coefficients by using what we're going to see as Pascal's triangle. Starts with a one. To find the next one, you add the two above it. To find the next one, you add the two above it. Find the next one, so on and so forth. Okay, so patterns everywhere, and we do. We get this thing called Pascal's triangle. These are, among other things, um, a way to give us the coefficients for these binomial expansions, right? We're talking about the binomial theorem and binomial expansions. These guys, notice we have one and one. Right? There's one and one. One, four, six, four, one. One, four, six, four, one. If I was going to raise x plus y to the fifth power, one, five, ten. 10, 5, 1. Okay, and we have our sequences here. This thing is, is cool. There's a lot of stuff in Pascal's Triangle. You can get on the internet, do some Googling, and, and find it. But there's all kinds of patterns and fun math um, nuances and art and symmetry and, and beauty. And I hate to get on my math soapbox, but Pascal's Triangle has a lot of really neat things you can look at. Here's one. Um, this top row, that's 1. That's 11 to the 0 power. It is. Here's 1 and 1 next to each other. That's 11. That's 11 to the first power. The next one, 121. That's 11 squared. What do you think this is? That's 11 cubed. What do you think this is? That's 11 to the fourth power. Some crazy stuff in here. And all we did is we made this sequence by starting with 1s and then adding to find our next one. Right? 1 plus 2, 3. 2 plus 1, 3. 4 plus 6, 10. 10 plus 10, 20. How about this one? Here's one. Um, if you add these two diagonally, oh, hold on. if you square this, you square two, you get these two added. If you square three, you get these two added. If you square four, you get these two. Square five, you get these two. These squares are mixed in there. Um, th there's more. There's triangular numbers. There's um, things when you get into matrices and determinants in here. There, there's a lot of hidden math inside something that's just a pattern. Really cool stuff here. But for our, for our purposes, we're going to want to expand a binomial. And these numbers, these coefficients out in front, come from Pascal's triangle. Hey, remember, we got this one from raising it to the zero power. So I call this the zeroth row. We got these two from raising it to the first power. So I call this the first row second row, third row, so on and so forth. So when I reference rows, you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's try one out. We have, we have two things to do now that we've talked about this. Thing number one, I give you an expression, and I want you to expand it all the way out without multiplying k plus j times k plus j times k plus j, or whatever the case may be. Thing number two we'll do, and we'll see if I can squeeze it in this um, video if we can, is finding specific terms. Like, what if I just wanted to say, what is the um, fourth term of this expansion? Okay, I don't want to have to multiply them all out just to find the fourth one. And in fact, I don't even have to do the expansion. I'll show you guys a shortcut to find the fourth term of these type of things. Okay, so well, let's start with our first one. Here's, here's some binomial expansion. I want you to expand it. Remember, it's just pattern seeking. So I know that when I start this, it is going to be whatever my first term is raised to the fifth power. And then from there, it'll drop by one every time. So it's going to be k to the fifth, and then k to the fourth, k to the third. Uh, something we can take into consideration here. Whatever the power is to the fifth power, there's always going to be one more um, term in my final answer for that. So there's actually six terms. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? These lines, these underlines right here, will be those the Pascal triangle, Pascal triangle, the coefficient from Pascal's triangle. So I know this is to the fifth power. So that's the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. And I'm sure I get to this in a second, but uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's this one. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Let's check it out. Uh, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. That's what's going to go there for these six terms. There's a coefficient every single time. And then it's going to be the first term raised to some power, the second term raised to some power. First term to some power, second term to some power. So I can write out this, this skeleton 
that's going to be this expansion and then just fill stuff in. So if that's what I do for us next. It's big, it's messy, it's still a big problem. No matter how you do it, it's a big problem. But hopefully this way um, is quicker for us. Not even hopefully, it is quicker. So the first term to the fifth, fourth, third, second, first, to the zero. Those two to the zeros become one, so it's like they're not even there. That's okay, but I'm just showing you that they really are. And then as um, the first term's powers decrease by one every time, the second term's powers increase by one. So it starts by my second term to the zero power, to the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Not too bad. We can fill in our coefficients from Pascal's triangle. 1, 5, 10, 5, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Sorry, I missed the 10. We put it all together and it, it, it's, it's faster, I promise. I wouldn't make you do it if it was slower. But this is the expansion you would get if you did k plus j five times. Multiplied it over and over and over five times. This is our binomial expansion. Okay, let's try another one. We will have to do another video, but that's okay. Um, see if we can fit this one in. I want you to expand 3x minus y to the fourth power. Hit pause, follow our same little skeleton, and fill in the numbers. Okay, we're back. Hopefully you, you hit pause and tried that. If not, then follow along. Here we go. Um, it's the same thing as before. If it's raised to the fourth power, I know there'll be five terms in my answer. One, two, three, four, five. Something that happens here when we're raising, really they're all addition problems. We're adding every single time. But if I'm raising my second term to a power, my second term would actually be negative. It would be a negative y. So this one would be negative y to the 0. That, 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 like it doesn't exist. This one would be negative y to the first. Well, that's a negative to the first power. That's why I flipped the sign on this one. This would be negative y to the second power. Well, a negative to the second power, that's a positive. Okay. What I take away from this, now that I've shown you this, um, if this is a minus in here, it just alternates signs every time. This one will start positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Easy enough. Okay. Um, every single time, these first ones will be 3x, 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 3x. The next one will be y, 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 y. It'll start whatever the power is I'm raising the entire binomial to. That will be the power of my first term. And then it drops by 1 every time. As it drops by 1 every time, the other term is being raised by a bigger one every other time. So this will be a 4 and a 0. 3 and a 1, a 2 and a 2, a 1 and a 3, a 0 and a 4. We can fill those numbers in because we're just seeking patterns. So I'm filling in all those blanks. Um, we need the fourth row of Pascal's triangle. Um, that would be the 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 row. And hopefully this is what you get. Get in there. See if I can fill it. Yep. Okay. There's a lot to go on there, but again, it's just finding patterns. The first one to the fourth, third. Some, a way to check this, um, the powers will always add up to the main power that we're raising it to. So four, three and one is four, two and two is four, one and three is four, zero and four, four. Okay, that all works. They alternate signs. The last step of this, and what's probably the most missed problem of this, when we're cleaning all this up at the end, we have to multiply all the coefficients together. So the first one is three raised to the fourth power. 81 x to the fourth power. 81 x to the fourth power. Next is going to be 3 to the third power. 27. 27 times negative 4. 3 to the second power times 6. 3 to the first power times 4. All that. We have to do all the coefficients. And these coefficients inside here, they're being raised to this power as well. And that's where students mess up a lot. So you got to raise these to the powers first and then times them by uh, Pascal's triangle, those, those coefficients we got. So when we clean all this up, we get this thing. 81x to the 4 minus 108. Well, you can read it. That's it. Okay, that's expanding binomials. Um, come back. The second video will be about finding specific terms. What is the sixth term of this gigantic expansion? Well, I don't want to have to go do the giant, the gigantic expansion. I just want to go straight to that term, and I'll show you guys how to do that. See ya.